work is to take the people that they already have a sense of spiritual awareness and they're really looking to take it to that next level in development and say, what does this mean and how do I become more of myself or to that next level? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, you know, I don't think that the world needs another, you know, person telling you the benefits of meditation, right? Yeah. Um, we, we live at a time where actually science has proven that. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually, and also we also live at a time when yoga has become mainstream, which Absolutely. is amazing. So uh, my work is not to tell you what you already know, it's to tell you what many of you uh, are kind of yearning to find out. Um, uh, those of you who are trying to break out of uh, the basics of spirituality, what are the basics of spirituality? Meditation, kundalini energy, um, chakras, um, vibration levels of uh, vibrations, being a little bit more aware about who you are, being aware and protective of your kind of mm -hmm. environment, your energy. So you learn all that and also somewhat maybe diet and somewhat of stretching and exercise. Uh, but then what, what comes after that? Yeah. You know, because a lot of what is really being um, put out there, whether it's via books or a variety of workshops and talks, all of that focuses only at what I call Spirituality 101, which, which is what I just described. And, um, and my work has really never been about that. Um, you know, I am one of the people who um, made uh, uh, Rumi known in the West. I'm very proud of that. I uh, uh, started working with Rumi when I was in my early 20s. And um, on professional level, I was published very soon. I started doing events and so forth. And I still do. I mean, I love my work with Rumi. He is my mentor. And, uh, and I learned a, uh, a lot about Rumi, which is one of the best things was that you have to constantly push the envelope mm -hmm. of personal development. You can't just say, OK, so I learned about you know, uh, the great benefits of breathing, great benefits of stretching. Um, or try to have positive mindset. I'm good, yeah. you know. And if you feel good, that's great. Meaning, if you feel like you're in a good place, that's awesome. But th there comes a time when you feel like, you know, that was so few years ago. What is out there? And unfortunately, there's not that much information. Yeah. What is out you. there? What yeah. is next? Unfortunately, most of the planet don't think that way. Hmm. Most of the planet. Um, or as we see, unfortunately, every day, you know, through a variety of types of information that comes to us, is that they uh, very much are, they fall into uh, different types of very negative energy, very violent energy, and, and they can't get out of it. Because, yeah. uh, so I call our kind of group of people, uh, people who are um, self-aware, who constantly want to push ourselves higher, a nano percent of the population because we're such a small group. Wow. Um, it's very easy to, to just be, to say, wow, life is so hard. Do I even have to like, push myself higher? Why can't, they just, mm -hmm. why can't they just chill for a while and just go home and you know, binge watch whatever, some yeah. TV show? And you can, because there are really no rules, ultimately. Ultimately, once you get on the path of self-realization, you are your own and your only motivator. Mm -hmm. This is the key of it. This is what people kind of, um, they were, they're being kind of programmed not to be aware of it. They've been kind of programmed to think that, oh, I need that person to get me there, yeah. right? I need that teacher to get me there. Mm -hmm. I need that deity, that, that little you know, statue yeah. I have to bow to every day. Or that discipline or that whatever, and then, then they become you know, dependent upon a certain aspect or a certain thing instead of, that can be done yeah. in a wide variety. The, the discipline is actually probably even harder than the other ones because that's a, that's a mind programming versus mm. a behavior programming. Um, but the only way that they're going to get out of it is if, for example, they, they watch this talk and, they, and something just goes bing in their mind and say, oh my God, it, it makes a lot of sense. Or they're going to think, doesn't make any sense. I'm so, you know, I love what is happening around me. I love the fact that I have the security of a deity. And I love the fact that I feel that this so-and-so, you mm. know, is going to open doors for me uh, in the heaven. Or I, I love the fact that my church tells me that I'm going to do this when I... It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Because you can't 
there is no force that can change that, and it really shouldn't. The process is self-awareness, self-realization, and ultimately self-guided destiny. And these are not easy, right? Yeah. You know, if they were easy, a lot more people would be into Doing this, it. Of right? Of course, yeah. That's <laughs> so that's why I call nano percent of the of the population. Now, is that nano percent of the population becoming larger? Um, I yes, be, especially now. A lot of us who are here at this time, mm -hmm. this is a very very special time, very special time. These um, also 1960s was a very special time. That was the birth of the modern New Age. However, New Age has failed us tremendously. It has served its purpose, but now it's become basically just candles and incense and massages and things like mm -hmm. that, which is great, but has nothing to do with, you know, with self-realization. It's perfect, especially coming after 1950s. Mm -hmm. We were conforming at a very high level in the 1950s, especially because of the influence of television yeah. and all the fake families, everybody mm -hmm. was 100% perfect, you know. Uh, so this came right at a perfect time to kind of wake people up. And then it kind of gradually went away, obviously, you know, yeah. the 70s was a whole different thing, and, but it gave birth to a new age. And now we are in an era that I call post-new age.